the Crystal Lake Killer goes caveman as we have a look today at the Funko Savage Land, Jason Voorhees. Yes, as a rather interesting take, Funko takes horror icons and puts them into Savage Land, along with some barbaric accessories. So just how tall is Savage World Jason Voorhees? I think I might have even called him Savage Land Jason Voorhees. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Savage World Jason Voorhees stands exactly six inches in height. In centimeters, you're looking at 15.3. For his accessories, he gets prehistoric versions of his more conventional weapons, one being an ax and the other one being a machete. Although the machete reads a little bit more like a sword than it does anything else. I probably would have just omitted the bone in the middle right here. And yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. That would have looked a little bit more like a machete. It just looks a little bit more like a sword. But I have to give them credit of taking their weapons, making them a little more cruder. And even like the blades themselves have a nice, nice little chipped away like edge to them. They're not sharp, don't worry, you're not going to cut yourself or anything like that. And the colors are pretty consistent with one another. The bones are almost like a beige sort of color. Then you've got the brown strappings that are strapping the blade of the axe to the bone. And same thing could be said for the sword. I'm not going to call it a machete, it doesn't look like a machete. You can display him with both weapons in his hand, although the sword holds better. You can pry his fingers away, because his little thummy, thummy, thumb kind of gets in the way of everything. Um, I do find though the weapons sit loose. This, the axe, if you will, sits the loosest because there's nothing really holding on to it. There's no handle or anything to it. The whole thing is the handle and it sits a little loose on Jason's hand or in his grip. Um, that's, only, that's a downside to it, but I mean, based on what they wanted to do with this line, and we know, of course, looking at this line, anyone from the 80s growing up will know and recognize this type of mold, of course, and calling it Savage World, they based it off the original Masters of the Universe line. I mean, clearly it does look like a He-Man just turned into Jason Voorhees. So the weapons are a little on the sucky side, I will admit it, they're not fantastic, but again, I get what they were going with. Bone, crude made weapons. We'll put those to the side. Let's have a look at Jason. And uh, like I said, he bears very much a striking resemblance to something you would see from the Masters line. In fact, what would I even call this guy? They should have tried to find creative ways, creative names to call them, not just simply calling them Jason Voorhees. I'm trying to even think of something right now off the top of my head. And I'm thinking... I don't know. You could have even called them many kills, but you wanted something a little bit more closer to it being called Jason. I don't know. If anybody can think of a name, off the, like I said, off the top of my head, I'm drawing an absolute blank. That's usually what happens when somebody just immediately grills you with something. Quick, give me, a, give me a, an idea. Somebody has to kind of think for a second before they can just randomly vomit out the idea. So if you can think of some clever name you would have called him other than just Jason Voorhees, even like Mask Tor, something along those lines. That's weak. I, I admit it. That, that's pretty weak. Speaking of masks, let's have a look at Jason's mask. I think pretty much it's a safe assumption to say that the, the design for this one, that kind of we're thinking Part 7 Jason. And the reason why I say that is the chipped away mask exposing some of Jason's skeletal interior 
under terrier, if you will. I don't really know what this is supposed to be. I get that this is strapping. That's a strap. I don't really know what this is supposed to be. I guess it's just supposed to be his bone right next to a rather decayed looking ear. Some teeth sticking out to the side. Very crudely painted, I might add. I'm pretty sure that's not teeth right at the top. That's probably his lip. Who cares, right? We'll just slather paint wherever we want to slather paint. A rather long and obtrusive uh, chevron here on the top of his mask. It pretty much dominates everything. Could they have put some chevrons on the side? I guess so. I mean, they, they at the very least, they did put something there, so I appreciate that. No, 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 Mark. You can't take the, can't take the mask off. The mask is permanently molded to Jason's face. Mask tour. <laughs> That's so terrible. And you can see that Jason's got his rib cage sticking out again. A lot of little cues and hues from part seven, right? Spinal cord sticking out the back there. Does he look like Jason? Now, here is where I draw some a little bit more criticism towards this line. I sort of started at the bottom of the of the totem, if you ask me. Um, I think some of the better ones are the ones that we're going to be looking at in upcoming videos. I don't th feel like Jason is the one of the strongest ones. And I think really what holds him back is his coloring. No, I'm not talking about the coloring of his skin tone. I'm talking about the coloring of his outfit. When have you ever seen Jason wearing green? Of course, we're not going to get into the debate of Roy's overalls or coveralls, because I say they're green. Most people say they're blue. But when have you ever really seen Jason wearing green? He has like a forest green top. I admit that. But I probably would not have given him this color. This just doesn't read Jason to me. What I would have instead given him is either gray from Jason Goes to Hell, or in all honesty, I would have given him blue. I would have given him blue. Although Michael Myers is going to be wearing gray, I would have almost even given him blue. I might have even said, I might have given Jason gray, I think, as, a, as an alternative to this green. The green varies in color places. Like, for example, the top of his skirting, his loin cloth, whatever, tunic, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's pretty ripped away, whatever it is. This part here is a lighter shade of green. And then he's got almost like these sports shorts <laughs> sports shorts underneath the ripped portion of the top so it's a little bit of a darker green I like that it's not the same green as the top here and then a very familiar Masters of the Universe fur boots uh, no peg holes I'm really surprised no peg holes on the undersides of Jason's feet but that's okay and figure does pretty much stand right the moment you put him down um, you're always sort of going to get this squat sort of gorilla pose out of them. That's on par with what you would normally get from Masters, and uh, Jason is no exception. Liking the brown that they've incorporated here. You can even see like they put in the little, up here it would be almost like little stud rivets around the side there as well. Everywhere there's brown, there's he's bedazzled with all this additional silver liking that and I also do like the little chain that he's got wrapped around the edge there wrapped around his waist kind of a little throwback there to uh, part seven or even part six Jason liking the figure but I think really where he misses any bit of a mark it's just the coloring I just don't like this green this green should have been blue or I probably would have given gray gray given him gray and given Michael Myers uh, blue even though Michael Myers when we are looking at him uh, he actually is in gray Possibility on this guy. His head rotates all the way around. He almost kind of looks like Lord Humongous as well. Just, just the way he looks very much like something that would have been extracted and just pulled out of Mad Max Road Warrior and just thrown down there in plastic form. Sorry about the sound effects. His arms rotate all the way around. His legs split out. And uh, they also go forward and back. That's that's all you're going to really get out of him. Is he a neat-looking figure? Yes. Is he a neat-looking Jason? Sure, why not? We'll go with that. Um, like I said, there's nothing really I don't like about the figure other than just the coloring. If they had swapped the green with something like a gray, I think I would like this figure a whole lot more. Let me just throw up a little bit of extra information in final looks here. I had a look at Michael Myers, and sure enough, he wasn't gray. He was blue. 
I thought for some reason that Michael Myers, I had this mindset that it was closer to Curse of Michael Myers Gray instead of his traditional blue. So I'm going to go back to what I originally said. I think Jason Voorhees should have been gray. Not this green. This green doesn't work. It works for a caveman, but it doesn't work well for Jason Voorhees. If anything, they should have pulled the green off, replaced it with... Um, like I said, a gray, and I think he would have been a nice, happy mix between uh, Part 7, Jason Voorhees, and Jason Goes to Hell. The rest of the figure is a nice, splendid mix of horror icons mixed with Masters of the Universe. Sure, yeah, the weapon's sit a little loose in Jason's hand, but I can accept that because this is sort of feeling like a more of a retro figure, of something I would have picked up as a kid. Speaking of kids, I don't know if this is going to be something that's going to be geared towards kids. I mean, there was always that off possibility that kids are really cool and love horror films so sure why not pick them up they're reasonably affordable as well i think i picked up the entire set off of ebay for about 70 dollars. that's not too bad at all considering you get five figures jason maybe not might be the strongest figure of the lineup i'm really digging the look of michael myers but i almost feel like with it being halloween right now i might want to just try to keep michael to the very end of the series of his reviews, to a, a big astonishing, oh, says the audience. We wanted to have a look at Michael Myers right away. We'll see what we can do. I don't know. Maybe I'll look at Michael's, Michael Myers next. In the meantime, though, uh, for all the belittling and bashing that I might do of Funko from time to time for their countless churnouts and vomitings, I keep wanting to go back to vomit. I don't know why I've got vomit stuck on my head. For all the vomitings that they do of the Funko Pops, and of course that usually gets a lot of ridicule from this reviewer, Funko, when they do think outside the box and get a little creative, I'm really quite impressed with their stuff. Uh, the vinyls, and of course now the Savage World, even though I called it Savage Land, are really nice little side additions to the otherwise yawn fest that Funko normally churns out with their Pops. Nice job, Funko! Even though that was sort of a compliment with an insult. I'm going to give it to you anyways. Today we were having a look at the Funko. This was the Funko Savage World, Jason Voorhees. And of course, like I said, we're going to have a look at the rest of the figures. So if you want to see all that sort of stuff, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. And of course, more spooktacular reviews lined up for the rest of Spottober. We're branding, just branding the whole month on this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.